YouTube, what is good? Danny Mulligan here. Today I'm bringing you another Whiteboard Wednesday and it's all about how you can get to 10% body fat or even less, or if you're somebody that wants abs, it normally around the 10% mark is going to get you abs. Uh, some people do show abs a lot higher, but body fat percent also a lot, about 17%, some people if they're really muscular. Um, but 10% seems to be this kind of arbitrary figure number that people want to get to. So I thought I would cover it and kind of the things that we apply can get you to all extreme body fats. But I'm going to try to cover today's subject in under five minutes and bring you the hardcore quality information. Uh, so stay tuned. So, first and foremost, I'm going to t tell you something you should maybe already know. If you don't already know, um, you really should know in order to get this 10% body fat goal. Uh, and this goes for really any goal, but particularly if you want to achieve 10% body fat, accuracy is key, and I'm going to explain. So first and foremost, we need to know our start point, and that has to be measured. If we're not measuring where we are, we don't know how far it take, how long it will take us to get to 10%. Let me tell you, if you're 32% body fat, it's going to take you a very, very long time to get to 10% body fat. It will take you a long time, and it's going to be a ton of consistency, a ton of patience. Um, so like, you need to know your start point. You know I mean, if you're already 12% body fat, it's not going to take you very long. So that will base then how long it takes, which we're going to talk about all this. Obviously, the protocol that in place, the training plan. So you really need to know your start point because that then governs everything else. It governs your calorie amount. It governs your training protocol. So the start point will be your body weight, your body fat, and we can pick up your body fat using these things. Skin fold, really you want to get a, a, a professional, someone like myself that actually has used them lots of times and had experience with them. They're a great tool we'll use correctly, I love them. Or it could be an electrical impedance machine, maybe you've used one of those, you know, you sat on a, uh, you got panels on your feet, panels on your hand and then it sends a little electrical current through you and fat will slow it down more and muscle will slow it down less and it kind of picks that current up and it then spits out a body fat percentage. Um, and all of them are pretty accurate, there's other ways too, but um, we need to have it measured. Or another option is you take a picture and ask a professional, you know, based on this picture, what body fat percentage, and because if they're used to seeing lots of different clients like myself, I can sort of look at somebody and go, right, you and get it within sort of 2%, so at least then you've got a pretty accurate starting point. Okay, then we, we what most certainly needs to be in a calorie deficit we most certainly have to have a training protocol that's going to encourage that and then we need to do that for a set length of time, track and back to the whole measure in between and then at some point depending where we started um, and how long you've given yourself and how committed you are, you will end up at this 10% body fat goal. So that's the really simple understanding. But 10% isn't simple for a lot of people and getting lower than that is not simple and it requires a lot more of all of this. So, these are the considerations and this is the important stuff, okay? So, in order to get success in this, you need to really take these, all these considerations in place, okay? Some of them are just general kind of considerations. So, the first one is like, how committed are you going to be to this thing? Like, if you're, if you're giving this one day a week and you're expecting to be 10% body fat and you're not willing to track your calories and you're not willing to do anything else, you will never get there. Full stop. It requires commitment. So first and foremost, how committed are you going to be? Then that also, you know, coincides with what are your non-negotiables. If you've got kids, if you've got really tough work commitments, you run your own business. Like, you know, running your own business, work time is probably a non-negotiable. You have to be at work for a certain amount of hours to make your business run. You've got to see your kids in the evening. You know what I mean? And then you've only got this small time frame and then trying to couple that alongside the right diet protocol and the right training protocol might be too much to yield 10% body fat. Or it might not be, but it might take you a lot longer. So, you know what I mean? These are the considerations. Then, the other consideration is making smaller targets. 10% if you're 32% body fat, it's probably not worth thinking about. You know, if you're 32% body fat, it's not even worth thinking about that. The next goal would probably be 25% and then 20%. And then 17%, and then head towards the 12% and the 10%. Okay, so make smaller targets. And that goes for any kind of goal, breaking it down. So it's this stuff that the real, the real good stuff comes in. So this, all this section here, okay, we've got these are what's called biofeedback, and these are the four main ones you want to focus on. Low stress, or stress being one of them, but you want it to be low, 
hunger, which is what we want to be high, quality of sleep, and sex drive. And the reason they're important, so you know if hunger starts dropping right down and we're in this deficit, it probably means that we had too big of a deficit and not, not the right appropriate calorie deficit. Because if hunger is dropping right down, it means we've probably starved ourselves for a too long period of time and then metabolism is probably dropping because when hunger drops, odds are metabolism is dropping, it's a good proxy for that. So then we're not in a good place. So the appropriate calorie amount and how we predict that appropriate calorie amount there's loads of ways which we'll talk about, but a good gauge if we're doing it right is hunger is not dropping. And then if stress is super, super high, particularly as a natural, you know, people like myself, you know, I mean, I'm in a hard deficit at the moment, I'm at the very end of a calorie deficit, I've been on it a prolonged deficit for a long period of time, I'm definitely below 10% body fat, and stress is starting to climb. And then, so if you're coupling that with a, you know, an intense work schedule, you run your own business like myself, Trying to keep that stress down uh, is very tough. So if, 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 if you've got so much things going on and then you really want to be ultra lean on restricted calories, you've really got to understand that it's probably the likelihood of it happening or managing everything is super, super important. And this is where it comes into maybe hiring a coach, having them decide what is realistic, what's sensible, what's sustainable, and that's a word I'm going to use a lot. <clears throat> so then we've got quality of sleep. Uh, super important, if quality of sleep is dropping, recovery is dropping, probably performance is dropping too, which is what we don't want, performance. Because remember, I told you I wanted to get to 10%, but I wanted to do it well, right? So if the whole way through your calorie deficit, your training performance is dropping, you're getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker, unless you're someone that's, like, you're probably not listening to this, you probably won't be watching my video, unless you're super, super strong, and I'm on about, like, you better be shifting some numbers, then your performance shouldn't drop dramatically. Um, you know, I mean, you better be deadlifting over 200 kilos at least. Then performance shouldn't be dropping dramatically whilst in the calorie deficit, or you're going too much on the offense and you're in too much of a deficit, or you're doing too much workload. So then, obviously, the big one, and it's sex drive. Look, when you go really hard on deficit and you get late, late, late into the stages, and you're starting to head towards 7% body fat, sex drive inevitably but probably will start to drop. But that is, I, well I'll tell you from experience, right now my sex drive's high, right, and my hunger's high, and my quality of sleep's good, and my stress is tolerable at the moment, okay? But that's because I've got the right training program, and I've got the right system in place to manage around my lifestyle, and I'm taking into these factors, I'm taking into these factors, I'm understanding what my non-negotiables, I'm making sure I get quality rest, my nutrition around my training is impeccable at the moment. So, then we've got We've talked about it, training, performance. We've talked about that, performance doesn't want to drop. Absolutely important. If, you're, if you chose a deficit that's too, too restrictive and you're going into the gym weak, can't produce that force, or you go too heavy on low carbs, you, your performance is just going to lack, lack. And if performance is, say, I mean, your bench goes from 100 kg to 80 kg to 70 kg, and all the time you've lost weight, yeah, you've lost weight, you've probably lost body fat, you've probably lost muscle mass. And when we want to get to 10%, we don't want to look like emaciated, we want to look good. So, then the next question would be, is your training program realistic? Because if you're somebody that has this crazy busy schedule, kids, whatever, you know what I mean, training six, seven days a week or six days a week probably isn't suitable. Um, and doing, you know what I mean, and how long you spend in the gym. So, is the training program realistic alongside the diet protocol as well? If you've gone really heavy on a diet protocol, we can't handle you know what I mean, a lot of volume, a lot of intensity. So that needs to be measured as well, I mean, especially when we get to those lower body fats, because we're not, we've not got abundance of body fat to use for energy. And then the final thing, make sure it's measured, and that boils down to performance. Your training needs to be measured, making sure you're really accurate with your reps, sets, those kind of things. If they're not continuously at least staying the same or going up, then odds are you're losing muscle, as we spoke about before. And again, that word that I'll use a lot, make sure it's sustainable. Like, ask yourself the question, can I maintain this in four weeks, 12 weeks, eight weeks? Like, can I maintain this in six months if you've got a long way to go? If you, if you, if you, you know what I mean? If, if, if you've gone harder from the offense and you're trying to get to 10% body fat and you're at 25% body fat and you think you can't last four weeks, well, you won't get there anyway. You'll just fall off the wagon. So is it sustainable? That'd be the first question. And then the diet protocol, which is probably the most important thing, so I'm glad if you've stuck around, you've stuck around to the most important thing, is 
1% a week body fat, fat loss or body weight loss. If you're losing more than 1%, if you're really if you're a bit heavier, 2% in the beginning, but particularly if you if, if it's continuously more than 1%, then odds are you're losing muscle mass and it's not body fat, and again, you won't look very good when we finally get down to the bo uh, body weight we want to. Um, the, the deficit does need to be small, so if, there's lots of calorie calculators, hire a coach if you can't quite get to grips with it, but you know, it, if you can get, a coach will tell you a really good estimated guess based on their experience, based on you know the data that's out there, what a sensible deficit is. But it typically wants to be about 300 to no more than really 500 below maintenance in the beginning. As we get to sort of 10% body fats, you can venture lower than that, but training would have to match. So if you, you are going much lower, I mean, if you're going 500, 700 below what your maintenance is, then definitely training it should not be really, really skyrocket at that point. So please understand that volume and intensity needs to match your training output. Um, then fuel around your workout, really, really important actually. If you're not, particularly as you get lower body fat, less fuel, because we're on diet, remember, the training around, the, you mean the fuel around your training is super important. Make sure you've got lots of glycogen present for your training so that you can, again, increase performance whilst we're in the gym. Because if you're, you know, if you're training in the evening and you're eating all week calories in lunchtime and you're leaving yourself 200 calories late, you're not, it's not appropriate, you know what I mean? Because you've got no fuel for your workout. So if you put your fuel around your training or if you're doing a morning workout, make sure you get a big evening dinner so there's, you know, that glycogen is present when you wake up. Just little things like that. Be tactful in your arrangement of when you time your nutrition. Now this one is crazy important, refeed days. I can't stress the importance that the more and more I do this, the more and more I realize that refeed days are absolutely important for long-term success. They are what's gonna help, and that word again, sustainability, they are what's gonna keep you sustainable, okay? Because especially if you are on low calories and you're really trying to increase that performance, you know what I mean? You, like over the week, Glycogen starts to get low because you're on a lot of low calories, a lot less body fat. Like you, you just you, you you've got not much fuel, but then you have that refeed day. It picks you up on the Monday, gives you that more energy. It helps you keep that sustainability because you know if Monday to Saturday you can keep tight, knowing that you're going to have a refeed day at the weekend. You're like, oh, actually, I can I can hold out till Sunday because because I've got a big refeed and I'm going to enjoy ice cream, pizza, or whatever. So that's. A, that's going to be staying, sustained mentally and help you sustain that long-term deficit. But also, it's been a great proxy for high metabolism. You know, if we have a refeed day once a week, the body then senses that larger influx of food, and then the rest of the week, it gives more permission for fat loss. So refeed days, the longer and longer I coach, are absolutely important. So if you're not doing them whilst in a deficit, start. Even if you feel that it's a back step, believe me. And you might put, if you do a refeed day on the Sunday, you might put weight on the Monday and the Tuesday, but then weight will continue to trend down, and it might look a bit like this, but the, you know I mean, the gradual trend is there, and it, it's again about that consistency, sustainability is key. Um, and then, probably this was rule number one with diet, track your calories. If you're not tracking your calories, and you're trying to get to 10% body fat, you are absolutely pissing in the wind, and you will not stand a chance. So, track your calories, okay? You might be one of those lucky few that are already low body fat, and if you're one of them listening, and you think, ah, oh, wow, whatever, well, then, you'll never get to extremely low body fat and you'll never to achieve your true potential if you're not tracking your calories. Again, the word sustainability is on there. We've talked about that a hundred times. If it's not sustainable, you will not last the long haul and that's what's important to get to the low body fats. And the final point on diet is higher amounts of protein. When we go into low calories, lower glycogen present, your body needs to make its own glycogen or it needs to search for it. It normally does that if because obviously remember, I want performance up in the gym, so when we're chasing performance, higher reps, or a heavier weight, it requires glycogen, and if there's not much glycogen present, what does it choose? Well, it probably chooses protein, so it literally strips the muscle, the muscle. but if you've got that extra reserve of protein, you're having higher amounts of protein, it will only use the extra reserve of protein and not literally strip your gains. So that is why you have higher amounts of protein through the process called glucogenesis, you need that whilst on a diet. And that is it, you know what I mean? Make sure you're patient, make sure that you, you, you're realistic in your approach and that everything suits your needs. Understand your non-negotiables, 
understand how much committed you're going to be to this thing and and, and you will get there. You will get there uh, that it requires patience, a lot, a lot, a lot of discipline, but with the right approach, uh, the right system, you will do it. So I think the takeaway messages here is slow and steady in this occasion, re always really in the fitness space, really, really do win the race. Be patient, be consistent, and you will get there. Please guys, if you liked today's video and it was helpful and you think that now you can use this as a bit of a guidance to get where you want to get to, please don't forget to like, comment of anything you, you want to see in the future, and please don't forget to subscribe, and until next time, see ya.